Afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this session on skills for the digital age. I was just modeling one such skill, which is being able to cope with technical disasters. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, I am Jack. Uh, I'm a manager within the Education Liaison team. Um, and I'll be sharing some tips, some advice on skills for the digital age. So uh, my actual background was in, in marketing. Uh, I've kind of been working in that uh, arena, marketing and education for give or take 10 years. Um, and I'll kind of be talking you through a range of, of kind of other uh, skills. Uh, we'll be focusing on the skills most valued by employers uh, and most likely to help you succeed at university um, and in your careers that will continue after that. Um, the idea is that we're trying to focus on skills that you can de deliver and uh, sorry develop independently, uh, but also with the support of Middlesex of this university. So these are, are what we're going to be looking at ahead. Uh, so we're going to be talking about some of the top skills that employers um, look for uh, in candidates. Um, we're going to talk about actually why they're so important in this digital age. So kind of looking at the, the work landscape. Uh, labour market information, etc. Uh, how to understand and, and actually develop your own skills. I think that's really, really critical. Um, and then a bit of information and support on how you can develop these uh, while you're at university. And that's using some of the resources and teams that are available for you uh, at Middlesex. Um, so before I, I kind of jump in, uh, I'm going to ask you guys a bit of a question, actually. Uh, and we'll have a poll that comes up. So my question for you is, which of these skills uh, from the list uh, do employers identify as the most important? So which of these are most valued by employers? Select one uh, or two uh, and, uh, and let us know. We'll, we'll kind of go through the answers in a second. Perfect. Before I move on to the next slide, would we be able to take a look at those results, please? So, uh, looking at this, lots of you guys are right. And I think what's really important, we're going to be talking about all of these, these skills across this presentation. Um, the ones that employers specifically talk about as most valuable are creativity and problem solving. And we're going to talk about uh, why these ones are selected in a second, but well done to everyone who's chosen one of those. So I want to talk around the range of, of kind of different skills that there are. Um, and the, the ones I've just brought up uh, were kind of transferable skills, but there's obviously uh, different types of skills. There's technical skills as well. These technical skills are specific to a sector uh, or, or industry or even a specific role. So some examples might be, uh, for example, uh, video design, uh, user experience, uh, but they also fit around kind of digital literacy. Uh, and we just talked about Microsoft Office there, which would very much fit into that. Um, I think often this is a, a kind of expectation uh, from employers uh, that you are familiar with digital platforms. Um, another big uh, technical skill that kind of comes up is sales. Uh, and once again, this is something often kind of grown through experience. In terms of transferable skills, broadly, uh, these kind of separate into uh, different sections. So how you work, how you work with others, and how you think. We talked about creativity earlier. Um, communication is another kind of key transferable skill. Uh, and we're going to talk about why it's actually so important to focus on lots of these transferable skills and not just be distracted by just the technical skills that you need to build on. So in terms of transferable skills, what are these? Well, critically, these are the kind of core and transferable skills that can be applied across all sectors, uh, across in any industry. So these skills are seen as indicators of work readiness by employers. Um, now, these following skills are, are literally plucked out from uh, a whole range of, of kind of sources from the World Economic Forum uh, and Barclays Life Skills have kind of put these into seven transferable skills. They are resilience, proactivity, problem solving, communication, creativity, leadership, and adaptability. 
ultimately, everyone is going to have a different mix of these kind of skills. Uh, but actually, the really kind of key point I want to pull out of this presentation is that all of these skills can be improved upon at university. I think that's really, really critical. You don't need to just accept the fact that because uh, communication or leadership aren't your strongest suit, that you can't develop them. Of course you can. And you want to use university as a vehicle to do that. But why, why do we talk about the importance of these transferable skills in the digital age? Why, why are they particularly relevant now? Well, I think we're going to look at, at kind of two elements. Uh, one is the kind of employment landscape. Um, and I think in particular around kind of technological advances. Um, and then the other is, of course, linked to kind of coronavirus um, and kind of the economic um, disruption that that has caused. Um, in terms of the kind of uh, technical advances, we, we kind of uh, have a headline stat here that more than a billion jobs will be transformed by technology uh, over the next decade. Um, there's huge, huge changes going on at the moment in terms of uh, artificial intelligence, AI, um, and, the, and the growth of tech companies. There are certainly um, these transferable skills are going to become more important as while some tasks can be automated, um, there are plenty of things that cannot. Uh, so things like leadership are going to be even more critical uh, as the kind of more basic tasks can be automated. Uh, the other reason that they're really important in a, in a kind of modern technological world, these transferable skills, is that they're actually applicable to all careers. Um, and also it's, it's about future proofing your skill set um, because many jobs that uh, kind of will exist when you kind of leave university uh, don't exist at the moment and uh, and this constant kind of growth in new new careers and new industries and then in relation to uh, coronavirus and the effect that has had uh, on the economy and I'm just focusing on the UK but of course this is applicable across the world as well um, so at the moment em employers are currently seeking almost a third fewer entrants on an apprenticeship or school leaver programs than they originally planned. Uh, and that's uh, according to an ISE report. Um, and, and, you know, to be absolutely honest, you know, there is an expectation that graduate jobs are also going to be impacted. However, by a considerable amount less, there's still going to be a huge demand for people with, with kind of graduate uh, experience uh, and qualifications. And it's not all bad news either. Um, yes, of course, there's huge devastation economically uh, because of the coronavirus, but there are certain sectors which are set to, to kind of grow. So health and pharmaceuticals is an example of a sector set to increase entry level recruitment this year. Uh, built environment, finance, professional services um, and energy uh, are actually looking at kind of cuts. So it is about looking at sectors where your skill set can be um, kind of harnessed. And I guess the real key thing uh, or piece of advice from me is to not narrow down your choices and ensure that whatever skill set you kind of come out of university with is valuable across multiple sectors. So understanding your, your skill set. Um, I wanted to give you an example of one skill that's available, uh, that's free as well, uh, that will help you assess your, your skills and strengths. Um, it's called Discover Me, and you can find it on the Middlesex website. At the end of this presentation, uh, my, my colleague, also named Jack, will be sharing some links with you, uh, and one of them will be this. Um, so it's a personality test, uh, and in terms of, of what it will kind of show you, uh, it kind of helps you identify your, your strengths uh, and your qualities. Um, but then beyond that, yes, it's great to understand yourself a little bit more, and that's really helpful but actually it also provides some examples of where you might be best placed in terms of sector or career. I think that's the, the kind of usefulness of, of this, uh, this tool. So it kind of focuses on things that you actually, you know, might enjoy and might be good at um, and helps you kind of place yourself within uh, kind of large industries. But how can you use this? Well, I think a huge part of it would be within your CV. Um, it's really come really common these days to, to have a, a LinkedIn profile, even if you're at university, and I, I would definitely encourage that. Uh, and it may be that some of this information that you can pull from this personality test is worthwhile including on there. Definitely shows that you're, you're aware of your own strengths. Um, also potentially useful to use within an interview um, uh, or a job application. Uh, the other final use is how you can use it uh, 
within research for careers. And I wouldn't expect anyone to know exactly what they want to do at this point, uh, but it can really help you kind of narrow down your search. Uh, I've got another tool that I'd like to, to kind of introduce you because I think this only captures one aspect of, of what we wanted to talk about, which is understanding your skills. Uh, but I also wanted to, us to look at how you can improve your skills. Uh, as I said earlier, um, you should absolutely not be limited by the skills that you feel you have right now. Uh, there, there's always opportunities to grow and develop your skills. One example of this skill set is Barclays Life Skills Wheel of Strength. So going back to those seven core transferable skills we talked about earlier, it allows you to uh, select the, the kind of skills that you think you have, um, select the personality traits and interests, um, and then it will, as well as sharing some, some kind of details of, of kind of different um, uh, job roles that may be applicable to you and giving you a bit more detail about how to apply for them, it also gives you an option of how you can develop uh, additional skills. Uh, and actually, not only how you can develop those skills, but also what doors will open up to you as soon as you do look at other skills to grow and improve on. I think that's really, really important. So once again, this is another link we will be sharing. So you are able to, to kind of use this tool uh, to kind of identify your skills, look at careers that might be useful to you, and then go ahead and develop those skills as well. Okay, uh, the, the kind of last thing I wanted us to focus on was technical skills. I know a lot of what we've kind of talked about is very much about transferable skills or what you might call as softer skills. In terms of technical skills, uh, there are some kind of key areas I wanted to kind of focus on. Um, we kind of talked earlier about some, some kind of really useful skills, video design, sales, and I wanted to share with you LinkedIn's uh, own uh, list of the, the top 10 uh, technical skills or hard skills as they call them. Uh, you'll see those that we've already talked about as well as cloud computing, artificial intelligence. These are really uh, important uh, tech skills. Um, so how do you develop these? Well actually, uh, hopefully, you know, the degree you're, you're looking at will, will have some uh, crossover with some of these skills. Uh, certainly there's a, a lot of degrees that, that do. But there's also opportunity for you to develop these skills yourself. Uh, LinkedIn Learning is one, one such place where several courses are free, others you, you do have to pay for. The Open University have a huge array of free courses as well as um, those that, that are paid. And these are short micro courses, not just the, the degrees that they, they offer. Um, obviously, uh, you know, you'll be able to take some additional shorter courses at uni, uh, at Middlesex as well, alongside your, your degree. Uh, Udemy and uh, Google Digital Garage are two others which offer really specific niche uh, courses for you to kind of grow your skill set alongside your degree. The final uh, hard skill, if you will, that I wanted to kind of highlight was your interview and CV skills. Uh, and I think a lot of people who have some fantastic skills do not realise that it's a skill in itself just to be able to apply uh, an interview for a job successfully. Uh, there's a huge array of support uh, for you on some of the platforms already uh, mentioned, but I also wanted to talk to you guys and, and highlight for you the resource that's available for you at university. So uh, MDX Works, part of the Employability and Career Service at Middlesex, have a huge array of activities and resources that are available to support you. Um, well, once again, include a link um, for you to find and access some of that information, but I would 100% encourage you uh, as you look to become more employable throughout your university time, uh, to look that up and, and make sure you access all of those resources. Perfect. I am now gonna pause it there and, and open up the, the floor to any uh, questions. Uh, please pop them in the chat if you do have any questions uh, and either myself or my colleague Jack uh, will pick them. Oh yes, and also, as I uh, would love to kind of remind you, please do feedback uh, in our poll on how useful you found the, the live stream. It's all anonymous, but it'd be really helpful for us to give us some feedback.
Fantastic. I'll just give you a bit more time to ask any questions and then we can wrap up. Thank you for any feedback. Really, really appreciate all of your time. Um, Jack, would you mind sharing the links uh, with everyone uh, in the chat just so that they have uh, access to those? Um, that, these are links to the, the resources I kind of mentioned. Um, and you will be feel free to, to kind of um, catch up on this video and watch it later on our YouTube channel, the Education is on and Outreach Middlesex YouTube channel. Uh, one question, any personal recommendations to help build skills that you didn't include? Yeah, I would say just one, one thing that I would add is uh, just around connecting on LinkedIn with people that you um, admire in a business sense. So if someone runs a business or is involved in a business that uh, has a great output, that can be as, as varied as Nando's or, uh, you know, I mentioned Barclays Life Skills, you know, get in touch and people are often really happy to pass on advice or even mentor people for free. No problem, Jamie. Any specific skills that uh, I would recommend? Um, I think a really, really big one that comes across a lot is, is leadership out of the, those kind of core transferable skills. Um, and that's kind of often requested by employers in terms of more technical skills. Um, funny enough, design comes up a lot. And I say that as a marketing person, but, um, but yeah, design skills are always useful. And there are so many free courses and YouTube videos available to kind of learn Photoshop or InDesign. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, a question uh, about how you can connect with, with new students for September. Uh, perhaps, Jack, if you could unmute, you might be able to address that briefly. Hello, yes, thank you very much for your question. Uh, so we have a Unibuddy chat available on our website that I'm just getting the link for now, where you will have the opportunity to speak to current students either on the course you're interested in or more generically as well what, about what it's like to study here. Just bear with me for a second, I'll get the link to that. It's a really valid question though, because I think, you know, the, the more that you can speak to other students and, and kind of build your own network uh, while you're at university is, is it, like, it, it's really transformative. A lot of my work, I do kind of connect with people I met at university and, you know, it does allow you that network to kind of help each other out uh, and, and progress faster. So that link I've just put in the chat is how to speak to current students. If you're looking for students who are going to be joining in September with you, I'd say the best thing to look out for is look on Facebook for a page that might be called something like Middlesex Freshers 2020. And that'll be a really good way to meet people either on your course or not on your course. And people will be posting in there about the things they're excited about, things they're nervous about. It's a really good way to meet people who are going to be going to be your peers in September. So it's really mm -hmm. nice to get that sort of connection in with them before you get to university. Yeah, I would encourage that. I would agree with that. And the only thing to add to that would be to follow us on all of those channels just so that you can see uh, and get access to any of those groups. Uh, and, and finally, a, a question on how will COVID affect the profession in accounting and finance? Yeah, I think that's, that's hugely, hugely valid. And I think it's, it's kind of tied into what we discussed around um, kind of future proofing yourself around artificial intelligence as well. Um, you know, there will obviously be some skills that are automated, uh, but there's going to be loads of skills that are not. And no matter how great accounting software is, you'll always want to have a human who is, is kind of monitoring that um, and, a, and someone who can look after a team uh, and motivate a team, um, someone who can communicate with, with managers and, and kind of. Oh, I think we might have lost him there, everyone. 
Uh, so thank you very much for coming to the talk. If, um, if anyone did have any further questions, I'd really recommend uh, getting on uh, the UniBuddy chat where you'll be able to speak to current students about what it's like at Middlesex. And you can get loads of answers for your questions on our website as well. I've put all the links that Jack mentioned on the chat as well. So we've got Barclays Life Skills in there, the link to the uh, MDX Works and the link to the My Career as well. Um, and anything else at the end, Jack, that you want to sign off with? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> another digital skill to, uh, to overcover. Uh, thank you very much for everyone who attended. Uh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, follow us on YouTube if you want, uh, or Education Liaison and Outreach, uh, and you'll be able to find the video there as well. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.